Sala. Hello, guys. How are you? Welcome back. Hi, mate. Welcome. How, Hi. how have you been, bro? I'm good. It's a busy time, but uh, I'm I'm good, and I'm. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to be with you guys again today. Yeah, I always look forward to having our discussions. Uh, I really enjoy your work, and uh, just waiting for you to share your screen. Oh, okay, you're a kindred spirit here. So, uh, can you tell us what you're? Right? Tell us what you're seeing in uh, the VIX. Uh, you know, yeah, I, I, I would. Uh, go ahead. Uh, uh, sorry, I was listening to your uh, summary of you guys. Uh, really, totally agree with, with the things that you already mentioned. Maybe with Corona not, I think we can get a fourth lockdown as well here in, in Europe as well. But I, I, I can be wrong, uh, like Volgi said as well. So we don't know, it's, it's difficult. But going back to VIX, I think um, we are, we, if, we, if we look... Since, since the corona outbreak, everybody can see we have moving back to almost normal. The VIX is tending lower and lower, but I think this is not the end. And uh, if we go back on seasonal charts, for example, we can see that August is the, most, is the worst month for stock markets, for S&P okay. 500, for example, and NASDAQ and Dow Jones. And... If I can share my screen on the other and side. And look, uh, Sal, it looks like the recent action with all the wicks. You know, I've been talking about the kind of wicks that we've been leaving in uh, the VIX, uh, uh, big wicks. And uh, it smacks of accumulation to me. And on your last chart, it looks like uh, the recent action has filled the COVID gap. If you go back to the other chart. That's to the other chart. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely, okay. I can show it again. Absolutely, and what I, as a technic, can always say is, what I'm looking for is, I, I totally watch on, just as an, as an indicator, on the EMA 50. If we are trending higher or above the EMA 50, then volatility can pick up. If we are down or below the EMA 50, it seems to be that we are okay in a kind of lower volatility uh, environment. But if we look on the chart, this is the daily chart, just to see what, what kind of ping pong we did in the last months. Yeah. Between the EMA 50, we are not, we are unsure. So I don't yeah. think that this is the, the indication of volatility will still remain low or go, will go back to the levels of 12, for, for example. I doubt Because it. of uh, the indecision tells you that? Yes, exactly. And okay. of course, of course, like I wanted to show you the seasonal patterns, of course, August is really, really the most, the worst month for stock indices. And of course, this is the month where volatility is picking up. So I can, I can assume that, that we will test maybe again this bottom that we have seen in this period of, of July. Let me just, no, no, no. You know, that's interesting, the seasonality, because one of the most important lows in stock market history happened in August. Do you know, you're, you're a student of market history. Do you know what year it was? Yes, I remember. It was the second shortest beer in history was 45 days, I think by Russian turmoil, but also 20, uh, 2001, down 10.9%, I think. Was okay. the, the biggest, the biggest uh, important low made in August was August. Maybe we're just still in diapers. 1982. 82. Oh, and that was yeah. the beginning of the prolific bull market. You're right. 11.5% just in August. Yeah, 1982. You are right. You are. And much that was more... a low. That was, uh, you know, I think about uh, 760, something like that on the Dow. So um, I remember it because I was short near the bottom, and right. then when it took, then when it took, started to turn, uh, I had no idea what you know that that was going to be a low for 40 years, but uh, that was it. And yeah, so I always I, remember August because I was the wrong way for a while. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Right. You remember those, you know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, 
we are traders, seasonal patterns, and this is what I want to to definitely underline. I, I don't know, I don't blind blindly trade seasonal patterns. I take them into my factor model, where right. I look for technical anal- technical patterns, for fundamental sentiment, and of course seasonal patterns. So this is not just the, the way how I'm trading. I mean, if if I go just back to, to crude oil, and I will show you something also in crude oil uh, on the chart, but I was talking, or I, I just told the people in April, hey guys, we are entering the seasonal best period for going long in WTI, just from a seasonal pattern. April to, till June is the best period, 9% over the last 30 years. This year, 32%, of course, we regained the momentum of, of the fall of last year. But I was not just going blind into the trade by saying, hey, right. because it's the best period. We had the recovery of the, of the market, recovery of the economy, vaccination, euphoria, that we will go back to normal was really in a good shape. We have seen technical uh, technically, we have been starting a new impulse wave that then at least broke up, broke the trading range and created new uh, ac- or activated new targets on the upper side for me, which was almost 76. In Germany, I had an interview where analysts from JP, from Goldman, everybody was there in, in May, I think. Everybody was short. Everybody said no. Yeah. I don't think so. $65, this is the end for the time. And I was the only guy who has been interviewed where I was saying, guys, we will see at least $75 or maybe $80 till July. And this is not because I'm yeah, brighter or whatever. I just had this opinion because of my factor model. I could be wrong, but I would have stop losses at the, at the lower side if we would break the trading range. So it's always about how you use your risk and money management and how yeah, you're good. creating your setups, of course, right? Do and you trade any VIX products when you see that or you just use it as an indicator for maybe stock index trades? Yeah, I use the VIX as an indicator for just stock trades, but you also know I have the Bumidi bands and the Bumidi bands, they are using as one variable the implied volatility. So the result the, the Bumidi bands are a result of taking implied volatility into my uh, my indicator and indicate or visualize the implied the change of implied volatility on the market. So instinctively, I use implied volati- volatility in my bands, and we have seen that in the S and P five hundred the last weeks or the last days. Actually, we have been. If we look, this is a 15-minute chart, but if we look from, from June, we have been in a nice upward trend. No, there was no day we have been testing the Bumidi band. So everything went smooth further in an intact confirm, confirmed trade, a uh, uh, bullish signal. Then the last, yeah, the, in July, we are starting to have a ping pong here at the Bumidi bands testing the higher band and reverting back, testing the lower band. Last week, here on 8 July, was the yeah the first drop where everybody maybe thought, oh, now, now is the correction starting? No, we pulled back the day after directly back to the, to the levels where we have been. And here you can see the Bumidi bands and the second Bumidi, the second standard deviation of the Bumidi band was exactly the low of of yeah. 8 July of last week, and we had it higher. And you can see, to your question, back to your question, yes, implied volatility, I use it as an indicator for just looking like here, what is what can happen? What can we see a pickup in volatility or not? And for my daily trading, I use it as support and resistance levels for, for my uh, entries and uh, exits if I trade on an intraday basis. Okay, well, it looks like um, this was the first time in that last chart that we were outside the Bamudi band all all the way through. Exactly, and this is an indication that we might see in the next days a drop or a breakout 
either to the up or to the low side. Bumi Dibens is not telling you that without using furthermore, like I always tell, if you don't use technical analysis or other factors, then you can't know now the prediction where it goes to. But if I think like August is a the worst month, seasonally we are, we could see a correction here and we are creating or forming new highs. We talked about inflation. We talked about other fundamental factors mm -hmm. that might have an impact for 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 the next uh, yeah for the next month i'm okay. maybe just to underline again i'm not pessimistic or really bearish it's just what i think a correction that is needed and maybe will come in the next uh yeah couple of weeks and this is not a correction where where i would say now we are going to deep dive into uh, levels that we have uh, seen a year before no uh, let me uh, let me ask you this, Sala. Uh, someone mentioned last week, and I haven't really had a chance to talk to many people about it. Uh, you know anything about Wells Fargo pulling credit lines? Have you heard read anything about that? Not yet. Sorry. Okay, it's underreported. Uh, anyway, I heard that they were pulling credit lines, and um, I don't know because oh. uh, I I think that they can't qualify under and they just went through stress tests so i was surprised to hear it and people are drawing analogies to uh in 08 when washington mutual yeah uh, stopped putting out uh could not lend anymore could not do any more mortgages but wells fargo's uh you know out west uh, in the western united states uh i would think would be affecting a lot of businesses if they're they pulled in their credit lines it's first yeah, time right. i've heard about something like that hey guys if you're listening i don't know if you're listening steve or stell have you heard anything about it okay they're they're doing other things anyway thought I'd uh, bring it up. Maybe you could uh, check it out. I think it's, uh, you know, I hear a lot of things, you know, they're not always uh, validated, but was wondering if you heard about it. Uh, here we go. Well, we have a very intelligent, they are closing all unsecured lines of credit. That's a big story. Yeah, that's actually a big story. Definitely. Can you believe that no, no one's even talking about it? <laughs> yeah, I don't. Huh? I mean, <laughs> anyway, all right. Well, you have something to look. Thank you, Bryce. Okay. Yeah, it's really important. Uh, I will take I will take a look afterwards for that. All right, we'll buddy. Been discussing. I, okay. So nice chart. So uh, kind of the theme is uh, VIX is you know uh, fluctuating back and forth above that moving average, and we're above the band. So. Okay, it, it, so, exactly. Uh, okay. Crude oil. I think in crude oil, we will see, like you, we have mentioned before, I can see, I think that we're going to drop again, heading to $70, okay. then creating a new pullback higher. I think there's still momentum in crude. Okay. And I don't think this, this is the end. So just a pullback, normal market correction towards 70. I know a lot of people want to buy right uh, 69 or 70 so okay that makes sense so, and, and we do have a failing rally today yes Sala. exactly i was right. i was listening to you and this is absolutely totally agree with you this is a failing okay. rally this this day okay. and okay. Uh, maybe possible possible chances for 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 people to create new setups of course yeah what i'm setting up right now is the Swiss franc, the Swiss franc and gold. Again, something that I use from combined with seasonal patterns. The best period for gold, everybody knows, standardly, a famous seasonal pattern is, of course, starting in July. And the Swiss francs, they are, actually have a big correlation with, with gold. And especially in July, Swiss francs follows gold higher actually and i was looking for the euro swiss francs and just looking here for uh, in this chart in this ig chart on a daily basis from 1st of july you can see this is of course this can be yeah. coincidence yeah but uh, you can see we start to sell off this is not something even in seasonal patterns if if, if i say july then it's this is a, a perfect example that we in July, in 1st of July, we directly start 
uh, to sell off. But yeah, and I noticed last week uh, while Euro was making new lows before the bounce it had, uh, U.S. dollar Swiss could not take out its prior high. I well, I didn't look at Euro Swiss, but U.S. dollar Swiss was on a relative strength basis acting weaker than um, right Euro. Right, yeah, and okay, and we see this nice trend. Oh, yeah, going like lower, de descending triangle there. If you put right, a flat line, right. yeah, absolutely. Nice. If I put this horizontal here, like our expert said, you're a great right? guest because uh, you're showing everything I agree with. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm kidding you. It Next time I'm going to switch. Uh, it, it wouldn't <laughs> matter, gonna, you know. Like, then you'd be my contrarian indicator. So anyway, yeah. but I'm thank kidding. you for this for this uh, short notice because this is an descending triangle and. We probably broke up, <laughs> broke down, and yeah. everybody knows we can create targets on, yeah. on the ascending triangles by taking the highs, yeah. projecting plenty the, left. Yeah. This is maybe too much, but let's see what can happen. So if we don't see a pullback, so this first pullback that we have seen here actually is nice confirmation that we could might see a further down pressure to one spot zero eight one spot zero seven five which is which are pivot support levels okay Got yeah it. dollar okay. you i this is something where i'm not agree with you where you have seen that you have you you are you're thinking that dollar might push higher in the next weeks right uh, well, right now, I thought we, you know, going home last week and on Saturday, I thought I'd be buying the dollar index around 9140. And then it came in higher. So I'm just taking a shot, selling it here, looking for 9140 and then higher. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And That's I see you have a pivot there at 9140. 91. Yeah, exactly. And I think we can see. I, you know, you, you, you uh, hacked me into my. Uh, <laughs> to my laptop and you have all my areas now <laughs> exactly this, you that's have, it. Yeah. oh i now i know where i got the ransomware <laughs> all right go ahead but, um, okay that i agree with you of course <laughs> i can see i can see here pullback possibility down here yeah. to this okay. pivot level yeah uh, we have see we have also the ema 55 here which but I, I think we have 95 96 in the dollar before the bear market resumes so just yeah. my call yeah for now right we'll Can see happen yeah I, and you know if you don't learn how to change your mind you won't have any change left so uh, <laughs> some so you know some nice uh, looks uh are you showing us this uh, so we know how to get a hold of you Is that yes what you're doing right here exactly okay. twitter at salabumidi if somebody's interested or if you have questions you can always uh, right. call me hit me up this is everything uh, for free and everybody uh, can uh, talk and discuss how, how do you like working for ig i i like to work for with ig because i was i was a client before in my study time and i yeah. love the platform i love the customer service the the serious company so mm -hmm. Then okay. I, after my study, after my university degree, I started with IG. And uh, it was for me, of course, uh, yeah, just swapping. You're too young to know as much as you know. You need to <laughs> dot, put some gray hair in there. Uh, I have uh, gray hairs. You could just you can see them. You can uh, see right, them. And this is right. a young. This is a young picture at all. Oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's what you use on the dating site so <laughs> that you look younger, right? Uh, exactly. Then, this one. And it then is. you show up, and the, the woman. And everybody will wonder and say, yeah, "Guy, who are you? So who are you? I'm Salah, <laughs> the great, the great guy." <laughs> All right. Well, I I really like this uh, look that you you've given us with your Bumudi bands and uh, the Vix, and um, so Twitter is the best place to uh, find you at Salah Bumudi. Right? Exactly. This is the best place to find me. And what do you think about the S and P five hundred? Do you think, with what I said, August and and volatility can pick up? So, what do you think? I think we're going to have at the minimum a ten percent uh, correction from between here. Uh, I think it could happen this week, next week, and um, I think that's conventional ten percent. 
I think it's going to be more like 30 into the fall. I don't know what the catalyst is going to be. There are um, a bunch of catalysts that could be. So we talked yeah. about this before today. It could be uh, antitrust action by bureaucrats trying to break up successful companies. It could be rates um, mm -hmm. bottoming out here, yields bottoming out between here and 110 and then heading sharply higher. Um, and it could come from outside the U.S. with some kind of problem in, uh, in Europe. So, uh, and, and now uh, this would be a black swan if there's a problem with more than just, because uh, I remember uh, in 08, like, you know, I had a, a huge credit line with Amex, American Express. And then one day I got a letter and it was cut like 80%, you know, uh, my wow. credit line. So they, you know, it, they were cutting everyone's credit lines. That's unsecured credit too. So um, we'll see if this develops into something. And uh, uh, let me know what you find out about it from your research people. Definitely, I will do. And I really appreciate you taking time out again, Sala, to be with us. I, I look forward to uh, your interviews and... I'll get a hold of you after the video is produced and we'll set up another date for the fall. Sure. I, I really appreciate to be the guest with you guys. Sorry. So at the minimum, follow us all on Twitter and people could ask you questions. And uh, uh, do you work with people as far as uh, their accounts in a broker setting or you just provide research or IG? I just provide research and coaching okay. in, in trading. You're so. a coach too. Okay. <laughs> exactly. You know, but there I'll, are two, do you know that there are two kinds of coaches? Do you know what they are? No. Coaches that have been fired and coaches that will be fired. <laughs> nice. That, <laughs> this is a good one. <laughs> that's in professional sports anyway. <laughs> All right. Perfect. Anyway. Thank you so much. Thank my you. And warrior, guys, brother. follow Forex Analytics, of course, every day. Nice thing. Nice, nice content. Nice information. Every, everybody helps. See, see how people love me? K is saying fire Dale. Okay. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> All right. So thank, thank, thank you. you thank you, Sala. Thank you, Dale. Thank you very much. Have a nice one. All right. All Bye. right. So that's going to be a wrap, everyone. You could join the team in about 20 minutes. You're welcome, Laura. And... Um, Paul and Zaid, and you could join the team in 20 minutes for the morning edge. Make sure you shaved before you go in there because they have an edge in there. And <laughs> I'll, I'll see everyone for Turnaround Tuesday tomorrow. Adios. And thanks again, Salah. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.